my darling extraterrestrials. I am Kim. This is Dust Motes and Velicor, and we're trying something a little bit new today. I have changed my camera. I am now filming on an iPhone 8, which is going to be interesting. It shoots in 1080p. It shoots in 60 frames per second. I'm not sure how the color is going to look. I'm not sure how to light yet. This is literally my test. <laughs> so we'll see how bad this video looks later on. Um, yeah. That sounded really pessimistic, but I am quite hopeful. So we'll see how it goes. A special hello to my new subscribers. Hi, I am so close to my goal guys and it's all thanks to you. Okay, coming back to the topic, this is my June wrap up and I'm actually really proud of this month because I spent the first two weeks doing pretty much anything other than reading. <laughs> it was a massive book slump and it didn't feel nice. I didn't like it. But then two books that I had put on hold came in at the library and I very slowly started to read again. And so I'm, I'm kind of proud of the seven books that I read this month, given that I did it in two weeks. First up was The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is a reimagining of a Russian folktale that also includes the original folktale inside of it, kind of like Folktaleception. A folktale ate another folktale. I'm slowly digesting it. That's really creepy. I don't like that at all. I'm going to try and think about something else now. The granddaughter of a mysterious woman who came out of the woods one day to marry a prince, basically, uh, is... She grows up with this frightening and mysterious destiny hanging over her head. Vasilisa is fey and half wild. She's stubborn and curious and fleet-footed, and she's deeply rooted in the forest that she grew up in. She climbs trees with wild abandon, and she makes friends with the, the household spirits that are guardians for the home and the hearth and the stables, and also the ones that want to eat you. At first, she doesn't really understand that other people can't see them. But she learns, especially when her father returns from Moscow with a new mother for her, a devout woman who forbids the traditional offerings to the household spirits. And just when their protection starts to falter, a menacing presence begins to creep in. So I turned the last page of The Bear and the Nightingale, and I set it down, and then I immediately picked up The Girl in the Tower, which is the sequel. It follows Vasilisa on a wild adventure with horse races and political intrigue and bandits and kidnapping and just grand old time. Disguised as a boy, our heroine sets out to see the world and ends up racing to stop a cleverly engineered coup d'etat. The third book comes out in 2019, and it is not soon enough. Next up was The Ship Beyond Time by Heidi Hellig. This book really kicked me out of my reading slump. Like, the first two were slow, and then this one, I had a whole day just with nothing to do. And so I was sitting down, and I just got caught up in this one. It took me about eight hours to read this book. <laughs> It's so good. This is the sequel to The Girl From Everywhere, and Nyx is recruited to save a fairy tale kingdom from its own story. It turns out to be a little bit more dangerous than she expected. This one had some incredible existential moments for everyone, but mainly for my favorite character, Cash. And it gives real weight to the potential consequences of time travel. This one felt very grounded in its ending, and there's no sequel announced, but there's so much more that you can do in this universe. And I personally would really like to see more. Heidi Hellig, if you're watching this, please write more books. That work of literary genius was immediately followed by Fury Born by Claire Legrand. My full review can be found in the cards, but basically two women separated by a thousand years are each fighting their own personal war. Riel might be the prophesied Sun Queen. Her control over all seven elements makes her a candidate, but it also makes her dangerous. Eliana is a bounty hunter living a thousand years later in a world where women can disappear into thin air and nobody notices. When the Emperor's pet assassins try to recruit her, she's given an impossible task and absolutely no choice. 
A Reaper at the Gates by Sabah Tahir. This this might be some new information, but I adore this series. Like, I had trouble writing this section because it's the third book in a very complicated series, and I just had some trouble doing the words. This one is definitely a connector book, tying up loose storylines and really ramping up for the finale. It definitely swings with a big stick when it comes to Elias and Laia. Ah, uh, there's some really heartbreaking moments in there. I feel like I can't tell you anything about the third one without spoiling the first two. So read Ember in the Ashes and come and talk to me. Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young is about a young Viking woman who crosses swords with her brother in the heat of battle five years after his death. To keep his secret, he takes her captive, but she does not go quietly. Seething from his betrayal, she plans her escape. But her plans are interrupted by a raiding party from an enemy thought to be myth, the same tribe that killed her mother. She and one of her captors, a young man named Fisk, her brother's new blood brother, must bring together their feuding clans and forge a new way of life out of the ashes of the old. It's compelling, it's character-driven, it's culturally fascinating. If you like warrior women, this one is good. Content warning, it does get viscerally violent. You will know the scene I'm talking about when you get to it. Just saying. And then I took a hard left into middle grade readers and read How to Train Your Dragon by Cressida Cowell. I got the audiobook from the library. They are read by David Tennant, and you can't tell me that they are not his best work. An argument could be made for Doctor Who, but seriously, his Scottish brogue is just so rich and evocative, and I just... And it's so silly, too. Like, I just... You, you might not know this about me, but I love How to Train Your Dragon. You If you follow me on Tumblr, you probably know. The movies are seriously like on my list of favorites and the books are so different and yet still so good i'm not sure how i feel about there being literally no girls but uh they're silly and they have funny sound effects and it's just like it's just fun <laughs> honestly i'm glad we have both the the movies and the books and the tv series and the other tv series and the shorts we have a lot of How to Train Your Dragon media, I'm realizing right now, but that's so good. And that's it. My July wrap-up will probably include all of the How to Train Your Dragon books. There's 12. But in the month of June, I read seven lovely books, and some of them are even pretty new releases, so do I get extra points for that? What are you reading right now? Do you have any recommendations for me? I do love a good recommendation. Aviento.